Ableton Live 11 has a ton of new and exciting features, but also has a bunch of these quality of life improvements. I'm Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton certified trainer and professor at the University of Colorado Denver, and I'm going to give you my personal top 11 list of these quality of life improvements in Ableton Live 11. I'm defining quality of life improvements as features or changes that improve your experience. Things that can streamline your usage of live or make things easier to understand. These aren't necessarily features that create different functionality, but they're things that make your experience better overall. I'm presenting these features in no particular order. Number one, effects categories. You'll see that all of Live's effects devices are now categorized. This is super handy since there are so many devices that sometimes it takes a little bit of time to find a specific one. This is also useful. Say you want to use distortion on one of your tracks, you don't have to mentally sort the entire list. You can just go to the drive category and see them all in there. Number two, templates. You can now create multiple templates to use in Ableton Live. It comes with a few to begin with, but you can make your own by setting up your Ableton Live set the way that you want, and then go to Save Live Set as Template. These are then stored in the browser under the Templates category. This is helpful if you have different ways you want Live to be laid out whenever you start a song. Number three, CPU Load Meter. This is an added meter that you can turn on to see the CPU load of each of your tracks. I found this to be super helpful when I'm working with a lot of software instruments and I see my CPU usage peaking. This way, I know exactly which track to freeze in order to free up more of my CPU. I found this to be one of my favorite new quality of life features. Number four, 16 macros. You can now have up to 16 macros available on all the different racks. All you need to do is press the plus button and you can have up to 16 macros available. Another helpful addition with this is that you can also subtract the macros that you want to be visible. So if you're only using one macro, you can hit the minus button until you have just one macro visible. Number five, setting the scale and MIDI clips. You now have the ability to set the scale in MIDI clips. Once you set the root note of the scale, you can select from dozens of scales, many of which you may have never heard of before. This will give you the means to experiment with different melodies. Once you select your scale, the notes of that scale become highlighted in the MIDI note editor. You can then select the scale button, which is the fold to scale function, and this will eliminate all notes from the MIDI note editor that aren't in your selected scale. Number six, tempo and meter changes built into scenes. Previously in live, you could add tempo and meter changes into scenes just by putting the number and BPM or three, four in the name of the scene and live would play back with those changes. Now you can add those right into the scene. Just drag the master track to the left and you'll see that each scene now has an assignable tempo and key signature. Ordinarily, these will follow the project tempo or key signature, but if you want to change a tempo or key signature across different scenes, you can just enter them into the right hand side of any scene in the master track. Number seven, updated detail view. The detail view in Live 11 is changed in a way that makes it more logical. Rather than click on the arrows to choose between the sample and envelopes tab, which is something that would always mess up in Ableton Live 10, you have these tabs, which now make it obvious whether you're editing a sampler MIDI or the envelopes. Additionally, you have an expression tab for MIDI clips, which allow you to edit the individual expression of MIDI notes with MPE instruments. Number eight, improved follow actions interface. I'm a big fan of follow actions, so I really love the improvements and features of the follow actions interface in Live 11. For starters, to bring up follow actions, now just click on the triangle in the upper left-hand part of the clip. The follow actions are at the top. There are also a couple of additional features in follow actions that I'll talk about in a separate video. Now, you don't have to manually enter the length of the clip into the follow actions. You can just select multiples of the clip length. For example, if you have a four bar clip that you wanna play through twice before the next follow action. If you want to manually set the duration for follow actions like previous versions of Live, you can just press the link button and it'll function as before. Additionally, you now have a percentage bar rather than probability ratios, which makes way more sense. You'll notice that when a clip has a follow action assigned, the clip launch button is also visually changed. Live 11 also has an enable follow actions globally button in the master section, which allows you to turn it on and off for the whole live set. Number nine, grooves are now located in the browser. Rather than have a separate tab, grooves are now located in the category section of the browser. You still have the groove pool window for adjusting the settings of grooves, but now it's easier to locate and use grooves straight from the browser. Number 10, improved device interface settings. There have been improvements to some of the devices, both in terms of functionality and interface. The phaser and flanger devices have been combined into one with an added function of a doubler. This creates a vintage delayed doubling sound. The interface is also improved in order to better visually demonstrate what it's doing. The chorus is now called chorus ensemble. It has both of those functions as well as an added vibrato function. It has also had its interface visually improved. Interface improvements are also seen on the electric and collision instruments, as well as the Corpus audio effect device. And finally, number 11, improved interface. Visually, the interface for Ableton Live 11 I've found to be much more clear visually than Ableton Live 10. You can see from these two enlarged 4K screenshots of the default appearance that there's a lot more contrast to Ableton Live 11. 
They both look great, but when I go from Live 11 to Live 10, Live 10 seems a little more hazy to me. I find the added contrast of Live 11 to be easier to look at, especially after several hours of working on music. That's it for my favorite quality of life upgrades in Ableton Live 11. Put any of yours in the comments below and let me know what you think. Of course, remember to like and subscribe as I'll have many more videos in Ableton Live 11 on this channel.